Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about hip drop. Uh, specifically, I wanted to show you what it looks like, whether working on hip drop specifically can affect your running mechanics, whether it has an effect on something like knee pain, or if uh, ultimately it can help you run faster. So to start off, I'm gonna show you uh, some videos I took myself a few weeks ago. All right, so this is me, obviously. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys some examples of bad hip drop or poor hip control. So I'll show you guys a normal speed clip and then we'll slow it down. And then afterwards, I'll show you kind of how my gait changes or my hip drop changes with different paces and intensities. All right, so this is me running very, very slow and I was just trying to exaggerate how bad hip drop can be so right okay so this is a good example so right here you can see that my pelvis or my hips are not level they're at an angle and the way this kind of affects things is that this line this is that there's not going to be is that there's not going to be a line from your hip to your foot there's not going to be a straight line ideally you would have something like this Ding. Uh, but when you're but when your pelvis is tilted like that um, you can't you can't you can't keep a nice straight line. Um, and this can result from not activating your glutes. It can result from a weakness in the hip abductors. Uh, we'll talk about it. Um, but I just wanted to show you kind of what it looks like. So this is what you do not want. All right, so in this example right here, here, this is like one of the big problems with having bad hip control with your gait is that your knee will drift. It'll drift inwards. So right here, I've got maximal weight on my knee, like I'm shifting weight from my left to my right foot, and it's like the transfer. So there's a lot of force at this point. And if your knee bends in like that, just a little bit, just a few degrees, it can put a lot of strain on that inside part of your knee. So, and not everyone's mechanics will work like this. It might shift out, it might shift in, it might shift in different ways, um, but it's that excessive movement into, to any direction that can cause problems that can cause knee pain. Ideally, you wanna keep things nice and straight. So, here's some better examples. I don't have perfect mechanics by any means. So this is me running through four paces, easy pace, a steady or a normal pace, a tempo pace, and then like a sprint. I'll play twice through, once at normal speed, and then I'll slow it down. So more or less straight, like meh, meh, you know, it's decent, meh, it's okay. This is steady pace. So right here is more or less the highest force point. So my pelvis is more or less neutral. There might be a little bit, there might be a few, it might be a few degrees off. And my leg is kind of straightish. Again, like I said, it's not perfect but like we're getting there. This is a tempo pace. Here, this is a good one. Cool, so right here, the weight transfer. Again, there's a little pelvic, there's, there's a little pelvic tilt here. I told you my form's not perfect. A little bit of a pelvic drop. My knee comes in like that. Mm. It's decent, it's okay. Do you guys ever um, get pain on the inside of your knees from when you knock your knees together? Um, this is a reason why. So right there. So I get, sometimes I knock my knees together and I get like, I bruise the bone. It happens. All right, so that's tempo pace and then a little quicker. Okay. Uh, this is a decent, a decent little, little stride here. Cool. So right there is about where the weight shifts. Sort of almost neutralish pelvis, right? Maybe off by a few degrees. Knee, and then over the foot. So like I said, ideally, ideally it's all one straight line. Like there's no, there's no curve to it. Straight over like this, and then maybe like directly underneath the hips like that. So a foot placement would be like right about there. Okay, so now that you guys see like what hip drop is and how it can affect your running gait, the important questions are, you know, does this help like mitigate pain and does it help with running performance? Like will it make you run faster? So I did find one study that was pretty interesting. So in the study they worked with a bunch of runners. They didn't provide them exercises to do to retrain the gait. They just provided 
real-time feedback and gave them cues like, hey, make sure you're squeezing your glutes a little bit while you're running. Make sure you're keeping your knee this way. And over time that actually, they changed their gait, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so like real-time feedback and just awareness of kind of what their legs were doing helped them alter their gait, helped them retrain their gait. And the effect of this kind of like real-time feedback on the runners after about eight training sessions was that instantaneous vertical force and then average vertical force was reduced by about 18 to 20 percent and their pain went down significantly, which I thought was super cool. So basically just by focusing on it, they could reduce the knee pain they were having and alter their gait, which in turn reduced the force that the knee was kind of getting from the bad mechanics. I found two other studies that were kind of similar. So basically they provided strengthening exercises to help support proper pelvic alignment, like strengthening the glutes and the, the hip abductors and the external rotators of the hip. And both studies found that the strength improved in the hips after you know a period of time one study found that this strength didn't correlate to improved running efficiency. So basically, even though they were stronger in these supporting muscles of the hips, it didn't affect the running gait, which I thought was interesting. And then I found another study that said it did affect the running gait, like, oh, hey, they got stronger, so they were able to keep a better hip alignment. But in that last study, that second study, the, the subjects were not runners, like they were just healthy people. And they started running, and then they gave them these hip supporting exercises. So, so I don't know how good that sample pool is. In those first two studies, they were actually using runners. So just kind of, you know, take that for what it's worth. So the key takeaway from this video, one, if you're having knee pain from running, just focusing on your mechanics will probably help mitigate that knee pain in the future. It'll probably go away if you can slowly improve your mechanics, basically keeping your knee underneath your hips and keeping your feet underneath your knees. So specific keys to think about activating your glutes a little bit while you're running, keeping your pelvis neutral, not letting it spill, not letting it spill backwards or forwards. So just kind of squeezing your abs just a little bit, just kind of tucking your pelvis. And then making sure when you land your knee, actively try and keep your knees out a little bit, like over top of your feet. Ideally it should be hips, knees, feet. But there's gonna be a lot of factors that influence your gait and your running economy. So just just be patient, just maybe try and think about little parts of it each time you go out running, just think of it as like gradual improvements. So that's pain like in your knee. Will it get you to run faster? Probably. It's really hard to say like how this specific stuff will affect your running economy. So many factors go into that. It makes sense that when you're running, if there's no wasted or excessive motion, to the left or the right, like with your knee or your hips, that you're gonna be more efficient and you're not gonna be wasting as much energy and you're therefore going to be running faster. Because I mean, we run in a straight line, right? So the less your knee goes this way and that way, the more it just kind of stays like this, probably the better. Um, another way to think about it is if you get knee pain or you get pain in your legs, then you might get injured or you're probably gonna get injured. Then if you're injured, then you can't run. And if you're not running, you're not gonna improve your running. So that's one way to think about it, right? So working on something like this a little bit actively and then hopefully passively in the future will hopefully keep you running for a long period of time. I'm gonna link a video below about crossover gate, which is kind of what I was showing you. The video is really good. There's, it's a three part series, but it gives you some really good mental cues on while you're running, things you can kind of think about and things you can do maybe before you start running to help keep you in the frame that you wanna kind of keep things in a nice a nice line as you're running. So I'll link that below, go check it out. One last thing I wanna say, don't go too crazy about this stuff uh, when you're out there running. You saw my form, it's not perfect. I don't have perfect pelvic alignment. You know, my knee drifts a little bit and you know, I but I can put in like 100 miles a week and I don't get pain, I don't have any injuries. Pursuing something like perfect form I think is kind of futile because I don't think you can ever get perfect form. But then also everyone's body will kind of find a way that works for them if that makes sense like when you're running you're moving your body the training adaptation is that your body learns to move more efficiently over time I mean that's 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 like the grand scheme of what we're doing we're just learning how to move more efficiently and the guys and girls who run extraordinarily fast their bodies have adapted and they have learned how to move very efficiently through space. So definitely think about it. And if you have pain and stuff, then yeah, of course, you need to find ways to fix the problem and continue to run. But just don't get super crazy about this kind of stuff. There's a lot of factors that go into your running economy, but by far and away, the biggest one is just more running over time, your body will find a way to move. Like I have really big feet and I pronate a lot. You saw in the video, if you guys go back, 
Like my feet, they roll in a lot. And I used to wear orthotics and I used to get shin splints and stress fractures in my shin. But over time, my body kind of learned how to move that way. And like the bones literally got stronger and the tendons got stronger. And so now I can put in big distance. I can, like I can do a hundred miles a week and I have no injury problems as long as I listen to my body and I you know, wear the right shoes. But these things take time. So just be patient. Hip drop and mechanics are things that you should work on a little bit here and there to pay attention to it. Over time, you know, you slowly increase your intensity, your distance, your volume over years, right? And your body will kind of find its way. So that's all, just wanted to say that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today. I appreciate it. If you dig this video, if you like the mechanics and the videos with like the different angles and stuff, or me like pulling up the studies, let me know in the comments, um, you know, like the video, <laughs> I'll put the video, like the video, subscribe. Tell your kids, tell your wife, tell your mom, tell everybody, share it. I would love that, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys for supporting the channel and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow, okay? Bye.